Bwana asifiwe sana. Muko? Aha. Na mimi niko na nashukuru Bwana. I love God so much this evening and I bless him for giving me an opportunity to bring his word and I know we shall share briefly what he has laid in my heart. And uh, maybe for those who may be seeing me the first time or you have forgotten my name, my name is Elizabeth Kongo. I'm born again. I love Christ. And uh, I'm a daughter in this house. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Mom, Pastor Alice. I really appreciate the fact that you can allow me to stand on this pulpit. It has taken God, and I rejoice for the privilege. Um, today is our... I think it's that uh, Wednesday we are talking about Thanksgiving. And uh, I remember the, the first speaker on, uh, is it on 10th? He spoke of the power of a thankful heart. And in summary, he told us uh, a thankful heart or a heart that is full of thanksgiving gives and comes with some benefits. And one of the benefits was that was multiplication. It also brings back life. It pulls favor or attracts favor. It brings revelation in our lives and it ushers in victory. That's what our brother, in summary, Pastor Zachary, not Pastor Zachary, who was that? Whoever it was. Yes, Pastor Zachary. And then last week, Pastor David Kibera, he taught us on developing a thank, of, you know, on how to develop a thankful heart. And my take home in this lesson was that uh, um, being thankful or, the, or having a heart that is full of gratitude is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. You have to work on it. You have to decide, I'll be giving thanks and I choose to give thanks and continue to give thanks. In summary, or just a few of the things our brother highlighted on Wednesday, is that thankful people focus on what they have, not what they don't have. And then he also said... Um, that being thankful, like I have just said, is not one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Being thankful is something that you work on, and it also touches on our attitude. Um, he also said that developing a thankful heart will go beyond material things. When we are giving thanks, it's not about what we have, it's not about what we have received. It is beyond the material things that we can see. And he also said... Um, we are able to develop a thankful heart when we stop comparing ourselves with other people. And he read a scripture which I know if we read it today, it will still make sense. Psalms 139 verse 14. If the media people are able to put it on the screen for us. Yeah, that's the verse. Can we say it and mean it to ourselves? Let's, let's say it together. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Now, if I'm wonderfully made, if I'm fearfully created, then I'm not you because you are created fearfully made in your own way. And so, I'll thank God for whom I am. I, I was reading my daughter's blog yesterday. Uh, a blog, eh? And she was giving us a, 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 her testimony. One time, I don't remember which class she was in, she came home crying in tears because somebody had told her her ears are very big and she's very tall and she's very slender and she's also dark. And uh, I think to her, being dark was not part of being beautiful. And this is the scripture that I read to my daughter, Anne. I told her, look at me. I don't even look like you. Neither do you look like me. Because this is what the Bible says that I am fearfully and you are fearfully and wonderfully created. And when you know that in your heart, nobody will shake you. So I want to challenge you. Don't compare yourself with me. Don't desire my big ears. Keep your small ones. But you still hear Bana Asifiwe. Amen. Don't, don't desire my big body. Stay with your slim and you still please the Lord. Serve him. Are we there? So you. Maybe behind your mark. Mask. Mask. 
you know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and I know it tonight. So if you are tall, you are good. If you are short, you are good. Big, you are good. Kuna watu wanakula na hawezi kupenenepa. Wanaishi tu na wanakula tu. Wewe ukikula na unanenepa unashukuru Mungu. Na wewe ambaye unenepi unamshukuru Bwana. There are those who are praying to be big. I have a sister who used even to pray and fast to get big. And of late the Lord has remembered her after many years. But I thought it was so funny. Me, I'm trying to work down my weight and she, she is praying to get big. And you know, she was told if you take yogurt, maybe this is a, a tip for those who want to grow big. Daily per packet. I don't know what it is. It has a way of br- making you book big. Um, that is done and I was doing a summary of last week. Jeremiah 1.5. This is um, <clears throat> Jeremiah. Uh, they are conversing with the Lord. And he's giving excuses why he will not serve the Lord. And this is what the Lord tells him. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. This was to, just, um, to, the, to Jeremiah. But to you. Si unajua jina yako. Unaweza kuiweka hapo. That before you, before me, Jerry. I was formed in my mother's womb. The Lord knew me. He even ordained me that today, a day like today, on 24th of February 2021, that I'll be standing here and speaking to a great congregation that the Lord has gathered. And you too were known of the Lord. And you are not here by mistake. You are not in DCIK by mistake. So don't compare yourself with anyone. Because when you do, you will not do that which you are supposed to do in DCIK. Please do your part. And when you do it well, then the Lord you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Today I want us to look at uh, something still on the same line, flowing with thanksgiving. Tonight we may do a bit of the practicals of thanking God. Amen. Yes, let's look uh, at Psalms 136. And I think we shall read it out loud, all of us, so that we can... It analyze it as we, as we read it. Let's go together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Verse 2. Oh, give thanks to... Mm-hmm. Amen. Verse 3. Amen. Number four. Amen. Number five. Amen. Number six. Verse seven. Verse 8. Verse 9. Amen. Number let's go on. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of, of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrow Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. 
and slew famous kings for his mercy endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage for his mercy endures forever. A heritage to Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever. And rescued us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. Buona sifia sana. Now, you realize from verse uh, 1 to 9, we are just blessing the Lord for his good, for his great. He's the Lord of lords. He's the king of kings. He's the mighty God. Then from verse, uh, verse um, 10, the psalmist goes through the whole history of the Israelites from Egypt through the Red Sea, through the wilderness, even until they came to Canaan, how they killed Og, how they killed that other one, and many others that one of them Joshua conquered before they entered Canaan. And um, I'm thinking we can actually choose to flow with thanksgiving. We can choose to love God because he's God and he is good. So you don't have to have any, received anything from the Lord to praise him, to worship him, to give him thanks. You can just do that because he's good. And I'm thinking the format of this psalm is different from many other psalms that we read. For each verse ends with, for his mercy endures forever. And the focus of the psalm is on the mercy of God. And I'm thinking this God is a good God to us tonight. Or I'm proposing, and he is. He is the Lord of Lords. You know, God is not an invention of our minds or of men. He is God. He is eternal. He was. He is and he will always be. He is our God. And for that, we can give him praise. He created the universe. And he also created us and put us here. Because he is love. He loved us and chose to, to, uh, you know, to be with us. Do you know God could exist alone without you and me? To eternity? He doesn't need you. He doesn't need us. But because of his love that endures forever, he chose to have us in, as part of his creation. And for this, I am grateful. And you too should be grateful. You know what? Our God is a master of those who are lords among men over their servants. May I say that again? Our God, and maybe I'll come near a home, our God is the master of Uhuru Kenyatta, the president of the Republic of Kenya, and of his deputy, William Ruto, and of the former prime minister, Raira Odinga, and all the others that you can list. But see, those are the top, as far as the political arena is concerned. But he's also the lord of our bishop, of our pastors, of every member in this church. He is lord. For his mercy endures forever. The beauty about this is that when Jesus came to represent, to be God on earth, he assumed this position when he ascended back to the right hand of God. And you can read that, we maybe can read together 1 Timothy 6.15. Which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only pointed, point, hey, hey, hey. And only potentate, Simusome, Munisaidie, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here Paul is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So, though here we could be talking about God the Father, remember Christ was there in the creation. We are actually talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of Lords and who is the King of Kings. Our God alone does great wonders, He alone has the power to command the supernatural. Even when the devil would want to assume that, that position, may I remind you, 
may I remind myself that God alone has the power and commands the supernatural. Usikimbie kwa kwa arogi na doago na aragori. Kwa ni muna waitagaji? Emu na itaganani? Wachawi? Na hao megine. Please be informed that God alone has the power to command the supernatural. Now, this focus on the miraculous deliverance and the journey to the promised land for the Israelites was the miracle of God himself. And um, I'm thinking, this was the journey of the Israelites. You have your journey, I have my journey. Mine could be longer because he's 60 plus. Yours could be 20, but you have had a journey. And each of us has a story. But now to us to focus, we want to walk down the memory lane of my life and of your life. As far back as you can remember, face every moment, bright or dark, and pick specific things and deliberately flow with thanksgiving. I don't know whether I'm coming out correct. You know, there are things you wish they, they are not part of your history, but you and me know you can't wipe away history. I want you to look on the, at those dark moments. Pick something that you can thank God for. You remember that time when the teacher told you, you, you are good for nothing, you can never make it, and you felt so bad, pick it up. By him or her saying that, you decided, I'll prove you wrong. I'm going to do my exams, I'm going to pass, and you'll be sure I'll be, may, become something, not like that which you have done. I want you now to pick the, the fact that you are able to take the challenge, and you finished form four, when you thought you wouldn't finish Saturday 8 or 7. Are we together? Are you there? Aha. I also want us to thank God for, I want to go back, that verse that I read, that the Lord knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I don't know that you understand what that means. Yani kabla wewe uwe, mungu alikujua. And uh, I want us to look at a situation when your mother conceived you. And while you are there, inside there, you grew and you developed normally. Bwana asifiwe. You know, in that environment is what I would call aquatic environment. The environmentalist in our midst can help us. And where we go, Daniel Maji na itagwa amniotic fluid. You are a fish living in the amniotic fluid, and you grew into a normal human being. That when you landed here out of the ocean of the amniotic fluid, you are able to breathe on the dry land and continue living. See, that is something you can thank God for. Um, are we together? Yeah, you are a fish living in amniotic fluid and when you came out you are able to adjust and live in this dry land. God was there with you. You can thank him that you didn't die in between conception and delivery. You didn't die when you are still a fish. At least you are here and you are alive. Have you ever thought about that? And imagine a fish, you forget it out of water, it can't survive. You are one, but you came out and you survived. And you lived to tell the story. For that we can give thanks. Thank God that you survived age zero to five years. That's when we lose most of our children. They die age zero to five years. You are here. You could be 11, you could be 10, you could be 20. You survived. Give thanks to the Lord. Are you there? Unajiona ukiwa zero to five years? Unajiona? <laughs> you survived that too. That's how we come here, here tonight. Thank God that you survived age six to twelve. Starting school and maybe being in class five, six, seven. I still remember there is a boy who was in class eight with my daughter, Wairimu. And that boy was knocked outside Kenyatta University gate while he was coming to school and it was in class eight. He had already booked the, the exam. So all the time they sat for the mock for exam, it was a reminder to that whole class that Chege was not able to finish school with them. 
you may not have had a chege in your class, but you can remember that one. Who was your primary classmate who never finished school? That's a good reason to thank God. How many of your age mates celebrated their 12th birthday? It's not common. It's not always. Thank God you did. Then you survived one of the most vulnerable age, teenage, 13 to 19 years. And that's when everybody wants to prophesy about you and what you'll become, even when you don't know who they are. But imagine you survived it. Never mind the abuse you may have gone through, you still survive to tell the story. The challenges you had to overcome, there were drugs even in our time, they were still there, sutta and capsules, sexual abuse, verbal abuse from friends and those we looked up to, our teachers, our parents, our relatives, our peers, and many others you can call them. But imagine you survived. You have a reason to thank God tonight. And I hope you are listening, listening something. Because I want us to have a moment to thank God together. Thank God you don't have to look out there. You know having food, having school fees, having school uniforms, doing and passing exams. All these were miracles from our God and our maker for you and for me. You know your story. Praise God, you are a survivor. I like what we have been calling ourselves, escapees of the COVID-19. Amen. You are the star of your life movie. And you know stars don't die in movies. Thank God you are here tonight. You are the star. Thank God for turning into young adulthood. The confusion, the loss, the discouragements, Thank God you survived. You are an escapee one more time of the young adulthood life. And you know not all of us have the same lives. So please look at your life because you'll stand and give thanks for your life. Do you have parents, one or both? Amen. You are lucky to have a parent, one. I will not look for that one whom I don't have. I'll thank God that my mother is alive and well. Have your parents rested? At least you knew your parents. Last week there was an article in, um, in, um, in Oro of a, a, a gentleman who is Ochieng, but he can't even talk Luo because he's been brought up in a home in Thika. He lost all his parents, except his sister, all his siblings, the whole family, in a road accident. And so the people who picked the two took them in a children's home. At one point, his sister left. They don't know where. He, he, she just jacked out of the home, and she, he has never seen her. So the only family member he knew also went away. And so last week he was saying the struggles he goes through at times People are going for Christmas. The only place he can go is Thika, the home where he grew. The people he know as his family are those young men and young ladies. They grew together. The people who, brought, who cared for them are his father and his mother. He doesn't know his parents or he had them and he can't even remember how they look like. He can't even talk his own native language because he learned the language that he found, people speaking. You see why you should not apologize that you can talk Kimeru? Or that you can talk Kikuyu? It's not obvious. It's a miracle of God. Bwana Asifiwe. Are you there? Have you ever complained? It's time to come back and give thanks. I was saying, if your parents have rested, thank God you knew them. This boy doesn't know whose parents are. And um, that boy represents many others. Thank God for friends for each season of your life. I've realized there are, there are friends that I have. Because they were meant for that particular season in life. Here season Nikisha, the Lord brings the friends for the other season. And you keep wondering, Tulipoteana Apina Flani, Akwamku Poteana. 
is because his season or her season is over. So don't waste time looking. Okay, I'm not saying it's good. It's, not, it's bad to look for old friends. But please don't waste so much time trying to reach them out, trying to get them, and they are not available because they are busy with their own. Move on with us. We are your friends for this season. Amen. Thank God you come from a family. Praise God for your siblings. If you have any. And if you are born alone, thank God you are the only child. It's also beautiful to be the only child. Thank God for your children if you have some. The born and even those who don't have. For the unborn children, start thanking God that you shall bring forth whole children, healthy children who will grow in the fear of the Lord. You bring up a generation. It is time to start praying for your children if you don't have them. And those of us who have them, I don't know one, any one day that I wake up and very few days that I will not pray for my children by their names. Pray for your children and thank God for them. <sighs> Isaiah 8, 18. We can look at that together maybe to support just what I'm saying. You want to read that with me? Let's go. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Maybe we could translate it into our own situation here. Or me, Elizabeth, and my children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in this nation called Kenya and beyond. Because Kenyan boundaries can't hold us from the Lord of hosts. This is your promise. You can claim it upon your children. And even when it doesn't look to, like it is working, continue claiming it and praying it. Because there is power. Thank God that you have children you can pray for. In Isaiah 54 verse 13, this is another promise. You can also, as you thank God that you have children, is a promise that you can claim. And now your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be the peace of your children. Isaiah 54 verse 13. All your children, let's read together. You read it like you mean it. If you have children, you'd, sit, you'd read this like it life and your breath. This is your promise over your children. Let's go again. All my children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. Can you say it and personalize it? Remember I said even if you don't have children, they are coming. Pray for them before time. All, all, let's go. All my children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. So even when it doesn't look like there is peace, this is your promise. And Isaiah 8.18, pray over it until it becomes Talk it to them until it becomes. Pray over, over them with these scriptures until they become. Even as you thank God that you have children. Thank God for every blessing labored in the name of your children. Call it forth. You know there are blessings that are meant for you and your children. See we have just read. You are for signs and wonders. Now it's your, it's your own opportunity to call those signs and wonders to become and become real. We are thanking God for children. Thank God for your career. You have a career or you desire to be a career person or you are pursuing it. Thank God. You have a job. Thank God. Thank God for this IKZ. Ukaulizwa ya chachi yako ni gani yata ukiitwa usiku. Utajua watu. Mimi kanisa langu ni Zimmerman Deliverance Church. Never mind which, which way you start calling it. Whether you start from Zimmerman or you start from Deliverance Church. This is what you mean. You belong here. Bwana asifiwe. Wewe ujakutana na watu wanahubiri na wana kanisa? Anakuambia mimi ni pastor. Unamuliza pastor, unapastaka kanisa gani? Hana. Wewe hata sisi ni mshirika na bado uko na kanisa. Pastor wengine hawana. Si unashukuru Mungu. Bwana asifiwe tukiwaombea wapate. Hallelujah. We have spiritual parents. We have pastors and we have a number that is forever up there. You can call any time. And you know pastors are not allowed to sleep. As far as we are concerned, they are awake 24-7. I used to switch off my phone sometimes. 
Then I told God, sitakuwa na poesha simu tena. What I'll do, I'll trust you God. Those phones that you want me to hear, those calls, those funny hours, those late hours, utaniruhusu nisikie. Zile utaki mimi ni attend those hours, utaniruhusu tu mimi ni lale. And imagine I just sleep like a baby. And the night that I need to be woken up, na isikia ikilia, na shanga ni meisikia. Mbana asifiwe. So you thank God you have pastors. 24-7 on duty. Essential services. Wewe. Mbana asifiwe. Amen. And we are saying thank God. Thank God. And thanking God is a warfare. Did you know you have to struggle to give thanks? We want to ask. Before two minutes are over, you're already telling God what you want him to do. We say, let's worship the Lord. And before we do that, you're already telling him. Now tonight, I want you to do warfare. Stand up on your feet. And see, I have given you the points and you can add the list. Bwana So I'm saying it's a warfare because our nature is to ask and point out whatever is not going on well. But tonight we choose deliberately, intentionally to pick the good things in our lives, in our circumstances, and thank God for them. Purpose, my brethren and friends, to flow in thanksgiving. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, give thanks. Not with everything. In everything. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So I want to give you like five or so minutes, so we are not in a hurry. Si life yako ni long. Na nimekwambia kule tutaanza. Sasa usiwe na haraka ya kukimbia at second moja, five years, one second. So you pick something and tell the Lord, thank you. Watu walipata misos, mimi sikupata. Mengine wakapata chicken pox, mimi sikupata. Na unajua nasemaka lazima kila mtu wapate. Na wea ujapata na ujakufa na upati. Mbana asifiwe. Yes. We will not sing a chorus. We will just go before the Lord. Start from where we started. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Deliberately, we choose to give you praise. We choose to thank you, dear Lord, that when we didn't know ourselves, dear Father, in the wombs of our mothers, there you are with us, dear Lord. You caused us to survive. You caused us to live on. You caused us, dear Lord, to get, to grow, to develop normal milestones, dear Lord, in the womb of our mothers. And here we are, dear Lord, whole and healthy. We give you praise, our master. We realize we lived like a fish within the amniotic fluid, God. But you, when we came out, we were able to adjust immediately and be able to live on. And here we are, we are telling the story. Age zero to five, when most of the children died, our father, you still sustained us and kept us. We thank you. We are the escapees, we are the survivors 
even of young adults out of our age mates in the name of the Lord. We want to thank you, dear Father. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you that we have a church. Thank you, Lord, that we have spiritual parents we can run to. We have pastors we can call, dear Lord. Oh, and they can pray over us. And we have experienced miracles, signs, and wonders because of their prayers in our lives. We choose to give you thanks for our bishop. We give you thanks for Pastor Alice. We want to thank you for Reverend Beatrice. Thank you, dear Father, for Reverend Kaunda. Thank you, dear Lord, for Reverend Millicent. Thank you, our Father, for Pastor David Kibera. Thank you for Pastor Brian Mashigadi. We thank you for every cell pastor. We thank you for the zone of pastors. Thank you, dear Redeemer. Receive praise tonight. Oh, God, we worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Father, for those of us who have children. Some of us, even God, you have blessed us beyond. We have grandchildren. We thank you, our God, for the privilege of being mothers and fathers. Oh, we thank you that our children are for signs and wonders. It doesn't matter how it looks right now, but we believe your word, our Father, that our children shall be taught of you, and grace shall be their knowledge of you, dear Redeemer. Oh, we worship you. We give you praise. My Master and my God, we thank you that we have a career. We have a job. Father, we thank you that you have siblings. Those of us who are parents, Lord, we thank you that our parents are still living. We thank you, dear Father. What an honor, what a privilege at our age to have our parents with us. And for those of our parents who have rested, we thank you, dear Lord, that you gave us an opportunity to grow under their leadership and their cover. And our Father, we have a legacy. They left a legacy in us. No wonder we are in your house, our master. We give you our praise and glory. We honor you, our Father and our God. We thank you, Jesus, that we have, a, uh, we have friends around us. Thank you for every friend you gave me for every season, dear Lord. And thank you because each of them played their role well. That's why I live to tell, I live to tell the story. I bless you now for my current friends. I pray that God Almighty, I shall be that kind of a friend to them that I would want to have my father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that I'm a member of Deliverance Church Zimmerman. Thank you, my Father, my cry and my prayer. I don't know how long I shall be here, but as long as I am in this church, I pray that I'll be that kind of a member who will build this church, who will encourage the brethren, who will support the pastoral, who will support our parents, oh God, and that master shall be a joy that I'm a member in this church. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, our Father. I want to thank you, Lord, for that we are Kenyans. Thank you, dear Master. Like you gave the Israelites the land of Canaan, we thank you that you are citizens. This is our nation. This is our heritage. By birth and by right of you, O oh God, you purpose for us to be born within the boundaries of this land. And therefore, tonight, we thank you. We thank you that you are Kenyans. We thank you for our boundaries. We thank you, dear Lord, for our 47 counties. We want to thank you for the over 290 plus uh, constituencies. We thank you, dear Master. We thank you, our God, for our words. Thank you, our Father, for our villages. Thank you for our homesteads, dear Lord. We give you praise and glory tonight. We choose to thank you, our Father. Thank you, dear Lord. We give you worship tonight. That God, we can listen from the sound of this microphone. It means we went to school. You provided school fees even when we didn't know it would come from. Our Father and our God, we come back tonight uh, deliberate, intentional to give you praise. Our heart overflows to give you praise, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, King in glory. Thank you, mighty Father. We thank you. There could be those things we are not even able to, to remember. But even for those, we thank you. That you are alive today, dear Lord, we thank you. 
that we are the escapees of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Father, we give you praise and glory. And we know we shall live to tell the story. We shall live to declare your doings in our lives. We shall live to glorify you, mighty God. For you are a great God. We thank you. COVID-19 is nothing new to you. Oh, my Father and my God, when Jesus is You have no part in our lives. Jesus Christ paid it all on the cross, and we are partakers of the work of the Calvary. We bless you, our Father, and we give you praise. We worship you, our Master. We honor you this night, our Father. How I pray that you shall help us that daily. God, we shall purpose to give you thanks. We shall purpose to tell you thank you. We shall purpose to give you honor. We shall purpose to glorify you. We desire, dear Lord, that you shall help us to develop a, a heart full of gratitude, a heart that flows with thanksgiving, and that daily, dear Lord, we'll find a reason to give you thanks. We therefore bless you, our Father. We thank you because you are good. You are the Lord of lords, the God of gods. You are the creator of the heaven and earth, dear Lord. You are there from the beginning. You are today and you shall forever be. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh in our midst. Receive praise, our Father. Oh, how we love you tonight. How we give you worship, Master. I pray, God, from this moment on, that we have more reasons to give you thanks and to complain. We will have more reasons to give you thanks and to compare ourselves with other people. We shall have more reasons, dear Lord, to love and trust in you. Because, dear Father, from this point on, we choose to walk with a heart that is full of gratitude. A heart that overflows with thanksgiving. And for this tonight, we thank you for a great service you have given us. Thank you for visiting together with us. Thank you for ministering to us tonight. Receive all the praise, our Father. Receive all the glory, mighty God. For you alone are worthy. You are worthy, mighty God. We love you. We give you praise. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name. And the church said, the Lord bless you. Walk with a grateful heart. Amen.